Germany has 16 federal states. 13 of them, the bigger ones, are known as Flakenlande. Roughly translated, these are area states. The other three are sometimes known as Stadtstaaten, city states. And these are Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen. This current organization of federal states dates back to around 1949, but Germany's division into various states dates back a long time, and 16 states are nothing when compared to how many there were back in the times of the Holy Roman Empire. I won't get into that whole thing, the history of the states and how German territory has evolved until becoming the current federal state. Although if you would like a video or a series of videos on German history, just let me know in the comments and I can do it. It's a part of history that I really like. In this video, I'm just going to take a look at the current states and the what if scenario of them becoming independent. Just imagine 16 new countries right in the heart of Europe. It would be crazy. So how would each of these 16 states do if they were to become independent? Now let's assume for the sake of this video that all of them would instantly join the EU so that the current stats for each would roughly stay the same. German states are pretty powerful in economic terms. For you to have an idea, each of their GDPs is equivalent to entire separate countries. For instance, North Rhine-Westphalia had the same GDP as the Netherlands in 2018, Bavaria matched Switzerland, and Baden-Württemberg equaled Poland. And even some of the poorest states fare very well. Bremen, a tiny city-state, was able to generate as much wealth as the entire country of Latvia. At the moment of independence, they would instantly become some of the richest countries in Europe although the bottom half wouldn't be so high up on the EU list. But still, the initial impression that we get is that any of them would do reasonably well as their own country, especially if they maintained their membership of the EU and had some type of closer alliance between them. The state capitals like Munich, Hanover, Stuttgart or Kiel are big enough cities to become national capitals. In fact, some of them already were when these states had a de facto independence as kingdoms, duchies, or bishoprics back in history. It's interesting because this scenario would actually be a return to independence and not a totally new reality for a large number of these states. But how would they compare to each other? We can do this comparison using a few factors. Area, population, and GDP. There are other factors, and I'll mention a few, but there are some like the Human Development Index, where the values are virtually identical amongst the states, so there's no point in looking at those. So let's take a look at these three factors to start with. First, area. Bavaria is the biggest state, with 70,000 square kilometers, followed by Lower Saxony at 47,000 and Baden-Württemberg. The smallest three are obviously the city-states, but when it comes to the Flakenlande, Saarland is the smallest with only 2.5 thousand square kilometers. But other than these four, plus Bavaria and Lower Saxony, all other states have a very similar size. But it's not just about the size of the land, it's what's inside the land. There's no point in having a thousand square kilometers if it's all desert. For instance, this map from 2015 shows us raw material extraction in Germany, and we can see that Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg extract a lot of minerals. But North Rhine-Westphalia is on top in that aspect, also extracting a lot of fossil fuels, a resource that's very present in the east, in Brandenburg and Saxony as well. In biomass, Lower Saxony comes out on top. So more size wouldn't necessarily mean more resources. Although coincidentally, that seems to be the case for at least the top four states in this category. But there are so many more factors to take into account. For instance, energy. In 2019, 30% of energy in Germany was still generated by coal. But coal isn't evenly distributed across the territory. In this map, we can see that most hard coal is concentrated on the west and brown is concentrated across the center region. So states that have it would do better until a full transition to clean renewable energies takes place. Next, population. 
Population is a good measure of success because it shows us how many people would be contributing to country wealth through taxes and through generation of wealth by working, making the economy function, etc. North Wine Westphalia has the most people at almost 18 million, followed by Bavaria at 12.5 million and Baden Wurttemberg at 10.7. No other state crosses the 10 million line, but Lower Saxony is close at around 8 million. Bremen is the smallest at 661,000 people, with Saarland and Mecklenburg-Vorpommern completing the smallest podium at 1 and 1.6 million respectively. It's interesting because in population, the city-states aren't the smallest, except Bremen. Hamburg as the 13th place with 1.7 million, and Berlin ranks 8th, being Germany's capital probably helps having 3.5 million people. And then the biggest one, GDP. If we look at it from a per capita point of view, two smaller states come out on top. By the way, if you don't know, GDP per capita is the wealth of a state divided by the number of people in it. Hamburg and Bremen take first and second place. They have less people, so even though the GDP is smaller than other states, its technical distribution is more advantageous. Hamburg equals Ireland's GDP per capita and Bremen equals Denmark's. However, a big one comes in third. Bavaria, which shows us that it's one of the richest states, if it can rank third with that much population, obtaining a value equal to the entire country of Australia in this factor. The poorest states per capita are mecklenburg vorpommern Saxony-Anhalt and Brandenburg. I assume Brandenburg suffers a lot statistics-wise because Berlin is measured separately, being sixth on this list alone. But still, Brandenburg at its 14th place still equals Italy's GDP per capita alone. And the whole mid-bottom table on this list has great results, equaling France's and Japan's GDP per capita scores. Only Saxony, Anhalt and mecklenburg vorpommern equal less rich nations, the Bahamas and Brunei respectively. With this map, we can see clear regional differences between the states. The south is the richest, followed by the west slash north, with the east being poorer in comparison, perhaps still a consequence of the west-east division that Germany suffered during the Cold War. But GDP per capita can be deceiving, so what are the actual GDP numbers per state? The top three state economies in Germany are North Rhine-Westphalia, Bavaria, and Baden-Württemberg, which like we saw equal the Netherlands, Switzerland, and Poland. The bottom three are Bremen, Saarland, and Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, which equal Latvia and Lithuania. Throughout the table, states are able to match the GDPs of Denmark, Hungary, Slovakia, and Luxembourg, which is pretty impressive. The map outlook provides the same conclusion that the south is richer, the west is pretty good as well, and the east has less positive results. Another additional factor we can take a look at is education. Germany as a whole has very high levels of literacy across the land, but some states do better than others in certain aspects like school quality, infrastructure, funding, and research initiatives. According to this study, in 2019, Saxony, Bavaria, and Thuringia came in the top three, with three Bs at the bottom, Berlin, Brandenburg, and Bremen. In conclusion, in terms of comparison, Bavaria, Baden-Württemberg, Rhineland-Westphalia, and Lower Saxony would be the richest and biggest countries. Should independence happen for these 16 states? There's also the issue of national flags. However, most states already have their own identity present on the state flag, like Bavaria, Baden-Württemberg, Brandenburg, or even Berlin itself with the characteristic bear, so no need for change would be necessary. The only exceptions are Lower Saxony, Rhineland, and Saarland, which use the national German flag as the background for their coat of arms. And they could maintain this or just use the colors of the coat of arms as new background colors for the entire flag. But there's also a few other issues that these new countries would be faced with. Currency would be one of them. If they wouldn't immediately join the EU and the Eurozone, would they have a common Germanic currency or each an individual one? Military would be another. Each state would be significantly weaker because they would have to have their own military force. But this could be resolved to some extent by joining the EU and or NATO. One more issue would be territory, but this is only an issue for a few of the states. 
three to be precise, the city-states. Would these remain independent city-states or would they be absorbed by their surrounding much larger neighbors? Berlin could just become the capital of Brandenburg, Hamburg could join Schleswig-Holstein and Bremen could become part of Lower Saxony. This last one would be the most likely given that they have two separate territories and would depend on Lower Saxony to go from one to the other. And we can also consider another hypothetical situation. Germany was divided into two countries, East and West. What if this were to happen again but in a different fashion? Instead of two separate countries or 16, we could have seven new countries following the natural regions of Germany. These are the North and Baltic Sea regions, the North German Plain, the Central Uplands, the Scarplands, the Alpine Foreland, and the Alps themselves. These would cross current state borders, but they are logical ways of dividing the country, as would be using rivers for division, since a few of them actually go almost across Germany from one point to the other. The Rhine could serve as a border for a new buffer state between Belgium, France, and Germany. The Donau could separate a German Alps country from the rest, or the Elbe could set the east and northeast apart from the west. Or we could go for two separate states again but separated differently with North Germany and South Germany for instance. Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg are large and wealthy enough to probably do very well together as a country. The first and third largest states combined would have an enormous potential and economic might. From a cultural perspective I don't think there's that much cultural difference between the states, but if you know, let me know in the comments. There's obviously a few local differences. Language is one of them, with some parts of the country speaking higher German, Deutsch, and the others speaking low German, which is Plattdeutsch, but I don't think that's enough to separate them. There's also a Danish minority in southern Schleswig-Holstein, but again, probably not enough to justify separation. Another way of dividing the land would be religion. This would give us mainly three independent states. One Catholic in the south and parts of the west, one Protestant in the north and remaining west, and one that is neither in the east. While the Catholic Protestant differences date back to hundreds of years ago, I feel like the Eastern German lack of interest in religion probably has to do with Soviet occupation during the Cold War. I don't think religion should really be a criteria for dividing a land, but if it were, we could have three Germanys instead of one. Although I have no idea how they would divide the West since it's all over the place. But as we know, any of these scenarios is highly unlikely, if not totally impossible. To my knowledge, there is no desire at all from local populations for this to happen. The only evidences of separatist movements I could find are very, very small. There's only one for a free state of Bavaria and an autonomy movement for something called Luzatia near the Polish and Czech border. Apparently a small group of people maybe want their own states. I honestly couldn't find any information about it. And despite the fact that I honestly believe that as long as they worked together and became part of the EU, this would actually be viable. I don't think they would do better alone than they are doing together. Because even these statistics, including the economical ones, are achieved in the context of a federal union. A state might be rich by producing a certain product, but the raw materials might come from their neighbor, and separation could put an end to that, making the richer states become impoverished. Besides, from a European point of view, I think it's better for all of Europe to have a strong Germany, as long as it's not at the cost of other countries, obviously. Before finishing the video, I want to quickly talk to you about today's sponsor, Mogul News. Mogul News publishes hand-picked stories from the world's leading publishers, including The Economist, The Times, The Financial Times, Bloomberg, and more all within one subscription. You know how you go on Netflix and have a bunch of TV shows from various networks? It's kind of like that, but only for new stories. In a world where information is more and more available, we need to make sure that what we're reading is reliable and from reliable sources. Mogul News is on a mission to build a better informed society by making high quality journalism more accessible and affordable for everyone. Use the link in the video description to join and claim your discount. 
paying only £4.99 a month instead of £7.99. Plus, on top of the discount, you get to try the entire thing for free for 7 days. So, if you like reading news stories but don't want to pay a lot of money to subscribe to each news outlet, Mogul News is a great way to stay informed. So that was a brief overlook at what the scenarios could be should each of Germany's 16 states become independent or the country separate in some other way into two or more new countries. How they would do and how they would compare towards each other and their neighbors. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe and leave a comment below with your opinions and suggestions for future videos. I will see you next time for more general knowledge.